Greetings, fellow NGOs and viewers. Welcome to NGO Corner. My name is Dr. Mrs. Josephine Ogazi Ebunu. And today we are going to talk about how to select your board of trustees and board of directors of your NGO. If you are yet to subscribe, please subscribe. Our last episode was about how to select a name for your NGO. If you have not watched that episode, please go back and watch it. Thank you very much. In selecting trustees, board of trustees or board of directors, the first question is who are trustees and who are directors? Well, the, first let me clarify the difference. Trustees are for those NGOs registered with CAC as incorporated trustees. And directors are for NGOs registered as limited by guarantee with Corporate Affairs Commission. So if you are registered with Corporate Affairs Commission as incorporated trustee, you have a board of incorporated trustees. But if you are registered with CAC as limited by guarantee, you have directors who make up the board of directors. So depending on your registration, you are looking at how to select your members of the board of trustees, or if you're registered as limited by guarantee, then you're looking at how to select your board of directors. So who are board of directors? Trustees and directors are persons who have the overall legal responsibility of the NGO. Trustees are elected or appointed in many different ways. Depending on the provision in the NGO manual or how your NGO uh, policy is, is constituted and your constitution, you can pick um, a trustee or director, members of the board of trustees or directors, any way you want. But if you want to be a credible NGO, accountable to the public, to the government, my recommendation is that the, the, the best practice is to place an advert in the public newspaper. People are like, no, they don't want to place an advert in the newspaper. But that has been the best practice that, that has been a best practice that uh, my organization has uh, done over the, 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 we have incorporated trustees. So we are, we have trustees and we, every time we want to change our trustees, we put an advert in the newspaper. And this has made the public feel that we are transparent, that we're not hiding something. When you don't want to publicly advertise for your board members as trustees or directors, people feel that it's a, it's, you have something to hide. It's one secret, you know, a, 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 a governance issue. So if you want to be a great big NGO and want the public to feel that, to know that you don't have anything to hide, you want to do everything in a, in a transparent way, your selection process is public, is competitive, you're looking for the best hands, then I advise you to go with place an advert in the newspaper. I know many NGOs say, ah, Madame Josephine, I don't have money for a big, big advert. You can do a small advert of 5,000 10, 10, to 10,000, then place a full advert on your website. So you can point people to a small advert of 10,000, 30,000, then you point people to your website to see the big ad, to be the, the full advert on your website. So if you uh, have board of trustees and you're looking to change your board of trustees or directors, please I advise you to go to advert and keep the record of your advert. So when people come to your organization, they will say, how did you choose those trustees? You said we went through an open and fair and competitive process. We did advert, see the advert. So anybody, any donor coming to organization will say, hey, these people are trying. Another way though, if you don't want to, you want to cover up, you don't really want anybody to know about, it's uh, 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 not really popular among NGOs to go to this paper. Most of them do this second that they do head hunting. They look for somebody and pick, I like this person, I don't like this person, I like this person, and they now pick. That is okay, but the best is the advert. And then also you can include internally from staff within the organization and say, I want you to be a, 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 a board member, but that also has its issues too, which I will talk about 
later, he has restrictions in terms of a trustee and a director cannot earn salary. So if they want to earn salary, it's difficult for them to be staffed. So um, that's these are the ways you can select a, a board members. So my advice is to place an advert for an open and competitive and fair recruitment process. Because you remember this book is this this topic is about how to to set up a credible NGO accountable to government and the public. So placing an advert is my best advice. Then so um, the the next thing we're going to talk about is the steps you need to to take in setting up in selecting trustees and directors for your NGO. The first one is avoid selecting family members friends and colleagues. I'm going to repeat myself. Are you an ED listening to my to this episode? Listen very carefully. I said avoid selecting family members, husband, wife, children, cousin, in-law, extended family, friends and colleagues. Avoid it. Why? Most people put their family members as their trustees or directors, which I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm saying it's not advisable if you want to be considered a credible NGO. It's not advisable because donors who come to check your documents when they do a pre-award assessment or they, if they want to know more about NGO, they will see if you have too many or you have one even, uh, a member of the board of trustees or director that is a family member, husband. Most women that I meet that have an NGO, their husband, is, is a board member. Most men, their wife or their children or their uncle or their, with the same name. You see the CAC certificate. You see Mrs. Abaji, Mr. Abaji, the son, Tom, John Abaji on the certificate. When a donor sees this thing, he will say what? Family business. You are family business. And why is it wrong? It's not wrong. It's just not advisable if you want to be seen as a credible NGO. Why? It's because it presents a picture of a conflict of interest. Can the husband correct the wife if the wife is doing something wrong? Can the, can the wife correct the husband? Can they really correct their, their son? These are the issues. So donors will see your NGO environment as prone to conflict of interest, prone to related party transactions, prone to internal dealings. That is, in fact, just avoid it. And what I tell people is they're like, I've already, my husband is already a board member. My wife is already, what do I do? And then I always tell them, well, it's up to you. If you want to be seen as credible, <laughs> if you want to be seen as credible, then you need to do this. But if you have a small NGO that is just doing some, you know, work at the in the community, small work with your personal funds, nobody cares. But if you want to raise a significant amount of resources, like over hundred thousand dollars or more, that's about five hundred million naira. Uh, then people will start asking questions about. Let's see who is governing the NGO. And when they see is a husband, wife, and children affair, even if they see one related member, it's always a big issue. So that is so avoid that unless you are going to have a foundation that is going to be giving funds and you don't need to collect funds from any donor, then it's fine. You can be like Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. You know, that's husband and wife, but they don't need any funds from uh, external donors. They fund themselves. So, they, 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 you know, it's not wrong according to law, but it's just the perception that people have about a husband and wife uh, 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 NGO. So, if you do not want to be perceived as a family business with a high risk of conflict of interest, Avoid selecting trustees or directors from family members, friends, and colleagues. And if you're listening to this episode and you happen to have husband and wife and on your board of trustees, it's not wrong, please. It's not wrong by law. It's just perception of donors about Nigerians, about uh, a family business, about the, the environment being prone to conflict of interest. So this book is about how to set up a credible NGO. So if you want your NGO to not be perceived, it's perception now, as uh, a family business, then we might need to take steps to address that. But it's not that it's wrong by law, it's fine. And if, 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 if that's what you want to do, then you just have to spend a lot of time to convince donors that there is uh, no competition. But let me tell you, when they come to your office and they 
ask you for the CSC certificate, or they ask you to send it to them, and they see Mrs. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, and Johnson. Ha, they say this is family. They will be gossiping around about you. And not why these people, they may not want to invest a lot in a, in a, in an environment where it's a family business, especially for NGO. So I think I've overflowed this. So let me now go on to the next point that you should need to consider when you are selecting board members. The big one that is a, one of the major problems is availability of board members. So this factor is needs to be considered because board members they are not paid. The board members in the NGO sector they are not paid. They may get may, their transport may be covered to come to meetings, but they are not paid. So many of them have their should have a paid. Uh, nine to five job that they are doing, which competes with time that they need to be available for the board. And so when they are selecting, if, 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 if your time, the, uh, the time they have to do work for you is competing with what their, their daily work schedule, they won't have time to attend to your thing. So what, how that, how that affects, how that affected my own NGO personally is that when I want to call board meetings, they'll be busy. They will call them, come now, let's have board meetings. They'll say, ah, I'm busy, oh. I can't leave my work where I get my daily bread to come and uh, sit on your board. Even though they are passionate about the organization, they want to help. But the reality is that they are busy. So I always, as an EDI, I always had that struggle of having a quorum. If you're a seven-man board member, maybe only three will come. Only four will come. So it, sometimes the board will not be able to sit because we don't have enough people. And some people, they will now, their board members are abroad in America or in Canada or in, uh, in London. So to get them to come is a problem. And now the availability of board members is, is really serious because when you are submitting, uh, when you want to open a bank account, they want these board members to sign physically. You can't send the electronic signature from a board member that is in America. Or So it, it, it's, it's, it's something that even though you find people who are not family members who are you know qualified to be board members, you need to ask them, are you available? to attend meetings physically, not Zoom. Because when it comes to signing documents for a bank, it's not Zoom. Also, not only bank, maybe there's a court case, the board members have to appear. If there's an issue with the donor wants to see the board members, they want to see them in the office and they are in America or they are in a far another state and they can't come because we don't have money to bring them. So the availability of a board member has been something that has affected NGOs because when donors come to the NGO, they come and see the number of board meetings you have held. The number of members uh, who who are present in the board meeting, board meeting, and if they see that the number of uh, board members and the board meetings are not uh, uh, up to the maximum number they require, they will say the board is not meet, the board is weak, and they don't see much activity from the board. They don't see the board getting involved with governance activities in the in the, in the organization. They will not say this people, these people, their board is uh, just a rubber stamp board. They're not really a board. And they mark you low on governance. But when they mark you low on governance, they feel that to give you, to invest resources in your NGO, they will say, uh, and they're not sure that the board is there to really govern and give guidance to the ED. So that is what, I, I've experienced that. When I had a scanty uh, board meeting frequency, they, 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 I had that rating. So now later we had to address these issues. Whenever we are recruiting for a board member, we ask the question, where is the board member located? Because my own organization is in Abuja. Is it in Abuja? Is it outside? How would the board member be attending meetings? To the extent that it's so bad our experience that when we're recruiting now, we say if the board member is not in Abuja, we don't want to. Because when we need them to show up for meetings, when there are issues, they will not be able to show up. So it's, it's, it's the availability of a board member. Let that be one of the second criteria. And then the final one for today's episode, because we don't have much time, is that you should, um, when selecting board members or trustees or directors, please select senior colleagues not and mentors, not junior colleagues and mentors. Identifying senior board members as uh, a, a board, uh, senior board members is better because Somebody that has higher qualifications than you, somebody that has more experience than you, has something to contribute to you. But somebody that is junior to you or in, a, in qualifications and experience has only to learn from you. And a board member is supposed to govern the organization, supposed to give guidance to the organization, is the legal representative by law 
to the organization. So they should have some sort of experience or knowledge that they can contribute, not learning. Because what I found out from my experience is that those that are junior to you or the organization or lack experience or financial capability, they may not be able to add any value to the organization. They will just come and sit down and be asking question, 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 yeah, question. Why? Because they don't know, they don't know now. And then when you have serious issues in the board, the board needs to tackle. They don't know what to do they, because they're junior to you, you know? And so, and also, uh, people that are junior to you, that are supposed to supervise you, it brings an insecurity. They, they might not be, they may be, they tend to be insecure. A junior person to you may be insecure about governing you. So they, then there will be, there will be issues of, uh, of, of expectation and, and you have to manage that and the, the maturity level and all those things will come into issue and it really usually brings conflict in the board. So, but if you, um, select somebody that is much senior than you, more experienced than you, um, in terms of resources, they have seen more resources than you. All they can do is add value because they can share their experience for you to, you know, that will contribute. So these are the three points. There are other points which I will take in the next episode. So if you have sincere comments, if you don't agree with what I've said or you agree, please, this is NGO Corner. This is our corner. This is where we are gathered together to discuss issues about the board, about board of trustees and board of directors. So ask questions. We can discuss and chat. This is all about NGO Corner to build the civic space so that we can contribute to the social impact and development of our dear country, Nigeria. Thank you. Yes, please like and subscribe so that you can get notifications of our next episode where we discuss further on things you need to do in selecting trustees and board of directors for your NGO.